hi guys. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here in the end times in the paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this gorgeous spring Thursday morning, April 6, 2017. And I and I should be out enjoying this beautiful day in the end times while I still have a chance. But before I do, I'm going to sink down into the muck and the mire as I do every third, as your depressed collapsitarian does every Thursday morning. And that's to bring you this week's <coughs> Dump the Trump the Hive Roundup rant. And you know, guys... <coughs> Uh, I, I was I was thinking uh, of, of of not only not doing this rant today, but just abandoning this this rant and just start ignoring this fat motherfucker. Uh, it's it, I, I am every bit as sick as you are of Donald fucking Trump. I wish the motherfucker had never been born, much less elected president uh, of, of uh, this country. But uh, I was listening to this hour-long speech by Chris Hedges, which I mentioned. I ran a clip from in my quote of the day, and I might put it on again, uh, end up with some of that. And, you know, where Chris Hedges is just reminding us, basically, that we need to keep uh, the, this fucker's feet to the fire. That there's nothing more, well, Donald Trump uh, doesn't want to be ignored, but there's nothing more than the machine behind him wants than, than to us, for all of us, to ignore this guy. You, you know, as much as I wish we could, uh, this fucker's got to go. And we can't drop the pressure. Uh, every one of us needs to be up there and, and, uh, and, and do whatever we can in our tiniest way to keep the fire to this fucker's feet. And, uh, and I don't need to hear the no-shit Sherlock uh, comments from you fucking eco-Nazis acting like I'm some fucking idiot. That, that, that I don't understand that this planet is fucked with or without Donald Trump. You don't need to waste your breath informing me of this. No-shit Sherlock. We are fucked with or without Donald Trump. The way I look at the way I look at Donald Trump is okay. Is that you know here in the end times you're living in some shack in the end times you're clinging by your fingernails to what's left of the shreds of global industrial civilization. The foundation of your house is crumbling. The roof is caving in, your well has run dry, you have no water in your future, your, your garden is drying up and blowing away. Uh, I, I, I get it, guys, that our house is falling into the ground with or without help from Donald Trump, but what Donald Trump is, 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 is and, and is cronies, his band of horsemen of the apocalypse, what they are is an infestation of rats in the collapsing shack of, of global industrial civilization. I don't care how bad my foundation, my roof, my well, and my garden are, if, if I have a goddamn uh, infestation of rats moving into my collapsing house, I'm going to get rid of the motherfuckers any way I can. And so that is what Donald Trump is. He, he and his buddies are an infestation of rats into the collapsing shack of global industrial civilization. But I'm not going to ignore them. I'm going to do whatever I can in my tiny little way to get rid of this fucking rat out of my shack. 
And uh, if you're interested in this subject, stick around. If, if you want to just ignore Donald Trump and these motherfuckers with some hope that they'll just out of sight, out of mind, that they'll just go away, and then stick your head back up your fucking ass, you clueless moron, and go back to your cute cat videos. I'm going to sit here and deal with this motherfucker today. Anyway, with all of that, let's dive right in to uh, the mainstream media and see what's on the minds of the mainstream media. Now, of course, <coughs> I would like to go directly to the Los Angeles Times for their single greatest editorial ever in history about um, Donald Trump, but they won't let me without subscribing. But fortunately, uh, Yahoo News has just uh, encapsulated uh, the this LA Times editorial titled Our Dishonest President. And I guess this is the first of four editorials. This is the, the leadoff charge. Take it away, Los Angeles Times, and explain to us what we're dealing with. Okay, I'm just going to... This is what Yahoo News excerpted, and I think it was a good excerpt. Take it away, LA Times editorial board. Quote, it was no secret during the campaign that Donald Trump was a narcissist and a demagogue who used fear and dishonesty to appeal to the worst in American voters. And back in September, the editorial board called Trump quote, unqualified and unsuited to be president and said his election would be, quote, catastrophic for the nation. But getting back to Sunday's uh, update of that opinion, still nothing prepared us for the magnitude of this train wreck. But chilling as they are, meaning uh, the they in here, not just his cabinet, but his policies, but chilling as they are, these radically wrong-headed policy choices are not, in fact, the most frightening aspect of the Trump presidency. What is most worrisome about Trump is Trump himself. He is a man so unpredictable, so reckless, so petulant, so full of blind self-regard, so untethered to reality that it is impossible to know where his presidency will lead or how much damage he will do to our nation, not to mention our planet. His obsession with his own fame, wealth, and success, his determination to vanquish enemies real and imagined, his craving for adulation, these traits were, of course, at the very heart of his scorched earth outsider campaign. Indeed, some of them helped get him elected but in a real presidency in which he wields unimaginable power, they are nothing short of disastrous. And that, the editorial board said that uh, the series will examine three of the president's troubling traits. So this is what we can look forward to in the next three weeks. Number one, Trump's shocking lack of respect for those fundamental rules and institutions on which our government is based. Number two, his utter lack of regard for the truth. And number three, his scary willingness to repeat alt-right conspiracy theories, racist memes, and crackpot out of the mainstream ideas. Thank you, LA Times, for summing this up. As I say, I, I put the Chris Hedges uh, evisceration of Donald Trump 
on my quote of the day if you want to go visit that. <clears throat> okay, well here's some good news. Odds grow for possible Trump impeachment. <clears throat> A combination of controversy, scandal, and low polling numbers have prompted odds makers at a UK betting house to predict President Donald Trump would likely either be impeached or resign or both <clears throat> before the upstart politician's first term in the White House officially comes to an end in 2020. I, I, I keep track of this each week. Uh, and, and so this week, the odds for an impeachment to happen were given a 4-5 chance of happening, uh, according to a website that describes itself in part by asking, <clears throat> what could happen next? Quote, the money is showing no signs of slowing down, and we have been forced to cut Trump's impeachment odds accordingly. We've taken five times the amount of bets on him failing to see out his full term than on him doing so. Uh, Ladbrokes did not even offer odds on Obama being impeached or resigning which speaks volumes about the current president. <clears throat> okay, now this next uh, story I'm just going to touch on. You know, I'm not going to, uh, I, I'm withholding judgment on, of course, the big story of the week about uh, Donald Trump ship canning Steve Bannon from the National Security Council. I, I, I'm basically with the Young Turks that this is a very good sign of dissension in the ranks of the Trump administration. And uh, I, let's just only hope that it's uh, a, a sign of, of more banning, banning. Uh, but, but anyway, I, I'm reserving judgment till I see where Bannon goes next, but uh, what no one is talking, well, a few people are talking about, is uh, who would, who do you think Steve Bannon was not exactly tit for tat replaced with, but if, when they take someone off the, the council, they have to put someone back on, and so who do you think that Donald Trump uh, put back on the National Security Council when he took Bannon off. How about Energy Secretary Rick Perry? Uh, the Energy Secretary, you know, this guy, Rick Perry, this oil man uh, in charge of our nuclear weapons system. Rick Perry, in charge of our nuclear weapon system, is now sitting on the National Security Council. Uh, yeah, uh, there, there, there was a real improvement. We have traded Steve Bannon for uh, Rick Perry. Talk, talk about out of the frying pan into the nuclear fire, our chances of getting in a nuclear war uh, just ratched up uh, quite a bit. Congratulations, Rick Perry, for becoming one of the principals on the National Security Council. Okay, well here's some good news in the roundup. Eight states sue Trump administration for delaying energy efficiency standards as the lawsuits pile up. This is attorneys general from eight states have filed suit against the Trump administration for delaying energy efficiency standards for such consumer products as ceiling fans, portable air conditioners, walk-in coolers, and freezers and commercial boilers. The Six standards blocked by the administration are, quote, vital to public health, according to New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. 
the suit accuses the Trump administration of violating federal law and costing consumers and small businesses billions of dollars. It alleges the administration is violating anti-backsliding provisions. I gotta love it, these, these terms. I need to add that to my glossary for the end times. Anti-backsliding. <laughs> There, there, there's a term for the end times. Anyway, uh, now, last week, I think it was in this very rant, uh, I was talking about the no shit Sherlock story, how Exxon, Mobil, and these other oil companies were begging Donald Trump not to back out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, the no shit Sherlock story, why the oil companies desperately want Donald Trump to stick with the Paris Climate Agreement for the simple reason it was the fossil fuel industry that wrote the Paris Climate Agreement. So, no shit Sherlock, this week, right here, today, this morning, U.S. coal companies ask Trump to stick with Paris climate deal. Some big American coal companies have advised President Donald Trump's administration to break his promise to pull the United States out of the Paris climate agreement, arguing arguing that the Paris Climate Agreement could provide their, meaning Big Coal's, best forum for protecting their global interests. Remaining in the global deal to combat climate change will give U.S. negotiators, now under Donald Trump, a chance to advocate for coal in the future of the global energy mix. Coal companies like Cloud Peak Energy and Peabody Energy Corporation told White House officials over the past few weeks. This is quoting one of these coal company CEOs uh, who asked not to be identified <clears throat> for anybody who does not understand this. Listen to a coal executive, quote, the future is foreign markets, so the last thing you want to do if you are a coal company is to give up a U.S. seat in, inter in the international climate discussions. Uh, they can't afford for the most powerful advocate for fossil fuels to be a way from the table. Is, is, is there anybody uh, at, at this point uh, failing to understand why uh, the fossil fuel corporations are the last thing they want is for Donald Trump to back out of the Paris Climate Agreement. And this is one of uh, the biggest reasons that your old eco-Nazi wants Donald Trump to back out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Backing out of the Paris Climate Agreement is is the biggest slap in the face and kick in the ass we can do to these fucking planet eaters. The Paris Climate Agreement is a fucking joke. Moving along. Okay. Uh, 
I certainly got a chuckle out of these next two stories. As long as we're talking about Donald Trump and uh, his band of uh, hor horsemen of the apocalypse, <laughs> you, you, you cannot make this shit up. There, there is nothing the onion could come up with anymore. Is the onion still in business since Donald Trump was elected president? There, there, there's no way the onion could have come up with this story here in the mainstream media from this guy, Andrew Friedman on Mashable. I really like this guy, Andrew Friedman. This is his uh, article today from Mashable. <clears throat> Interior Department changes website from family visiting a park to a giant pile of coal. Even the smallest of symbolic details cannot escape the changes of life in Donald Trump's America. The government agency responsible for overseeing a staggering 258 million acres of our public land, including ecologically vital conservation areas, has changed the image on its homepage from a scenic park vista to a massive, tall pile of coal. The website change, which happened in the past 24 hours, is in keeping with the Trump administration's push to drill for oil, natural gas, and minerals on our public lands. The new picture at the top of the site appears to be from Peabody Energy. Uh, the page identifies it as, quote, an 80-foot coal seam at the North Antelope Rochelle Open Cut Coal Mine. Uh, anyway, uh, all right, from that new banner photo to represent the future of 258 million acres of our public lands. We have this, this story again. Nothing in the onion could compete with this one. Trump donates three months salary to the Interior Department offsetting 0.005% of his proposed budget cuts to the Interior Department. The White House announced Monday that President Trump would be donating his first quarter salary to the Department of the Interior, which stands to lose $1.6 billion under his budget proposal. Uh, Press Secretary Sean Spicer said that Trump would be donating $78,000 to the National Park Service, an agency of the Interior. Trump had said during his campaign that he would donate his presidential salary to charity, saying, quote, that's no big deal for me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Donald Trump, for donating uh, your first three months of salary to the Interior Department that you just cut $1.6 billion from. All right. Couple of related stories. Here is the International Business Times. Trump backs away from campaign promises. Oh, shit. It's been just a few months into his new role as the leader of the free world and president. Donald Trump has officially eclipsed his honeymoon period. The latest Gallup polls revealed the new president's approval ratings are plummeting, 
while several of his campaign promises made during the 2016 presidential election failed to take shape after he assumed the Oval Office. Okay, let's just look at a few of the roundup. Number one, <clears throat> these are campaign promises, in case you forgot. Number one, the federal government would implement a total and complete shut down of Muslims entering the U.S. until our country can figure out what the hell is going on. Number two, Mexico will pay for a wall sprawling nearly 2,000 miles across the U.S. border. Number three, the new administration would immediately repeal and replace Obamacare. Number four, Speaking of Twitter, Trump said he would stop using the social platform after becoming president. And of course, number five, no vacations, no leaving the White House, and definitely no golf. There you go. Okay, I mentioned this one yesterday, but I'm going to get a little deeper into it today. A timeline, this is from Newsweek magazine, a timeline of every ridiculous thing Donald Trump has said about climate change. Well, starting off, they go all the way back to 2009, the one, the one uh, non-ridiculous thing. In 2009, Trump signs a letter calling for urgent climate action. Almost exactly one year later, in, in February of 2010, Trump changes his mind, says Al Gore should be stripped of his Nobel Prize because it is cold outside in February. Later that month, uh, Trump claims scientists admitted global warming is a con. Okay, let's jump ahead. November of 2012, quote, the concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese. And then a year later in 2013, Trump declares global warming a hoax. Moving into 2014, Trump says climatologists are in on the hoax. Uh, just going through 2014, then we have Trump donates money to fight climate change. Then in 2015, Trump says it is madness to call climate change our number one problem. And later in 2015, quote, I am not a believer in man-made global warming. Towards the end of 2015, Trump says it is ridiculous for Obama to pursue the Paris Climate Agreement. Thank you, Donald Trump. Uh, I absolutely agreeing with Donald Trump that it is ridiculous for Obama or Trump to pursue the Paris Climate Agreement. Let's see, fleshing out 2015, a lot of a, a lot of it's a hoax, and I want to use hairspray. Moving into 2016. Trump says his claim that global warming is a Chinese hoax was just a joke, that he never meant to say that, or that he was joking. And then, if you recall last year, Trump wants to build a seawall to protect his own resort from global warming. Here, Trump digs coal here, thank you, Donald Trump pledges to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. Then, later last year, Trump says he probably called climate change a hoax. 
and getting uh, closer and closer to now, Trump picks leading climate skeptic to run the EPA transition and now to run the EPA. Uh, let's see, now Trump denies den ever saying that climate change was a Chinese hoax. Uh, let's see, getting closer and closer to now, Trump has an open mind on the Paris Agreement but still think scientists are misleading us. Uh, coming to around Thanksgiving, Trump's default position is that climate change is a bunch of bunk. Here is the first daughter. Uh, Ivanka Trump wants to make climate change one of her signature issues. Here is Donald and Ivanka meeting with Al Gore, and then Trump picks climate change skeptic to lead the EPA. Here is White House climate website replaced with pledge to eliminate Obama's climate regulations. Uh, here is getting uh, up to last week, I guess. Trump, in, uh, about a month ago, Trump administration revisits fuel standards. Trump plans to cut climate research because it's a waste of your money. Trump pledges executive actions with, that will save our coal industry. And finally, last week, Trump signs executive order gutting many of Obama's climate policies. But I want to wrap up this rant with uh, the second time this rant, tipping my hat to Donald Trump. Trump warns U.S. will act unilaterally if China does not intervene over North Korea. U.S. President Donald Trump has warned that the U.S. will not hesitate to take unilateral action against North Korea unless China plays its part and puts pressure on the hermit regime. Uh, Trump made it clear in an interview with the Financial Times that he would, quote, deal with North Korea with or without China's help. Thank you, Donald Trump. The, the one thing that, well, there's two things that I want Donald Trump to accomplish before we do kick him out. Two things, I want Donald Trump to get us out of the U.S. climate, the, the Paris Climate Agreement, U.S. out of Paris climate agreement, and, and, and I want this, uh, this egomaniacal, fat-ass madman to, uh, to squash that little egomaniac, fat-ass madman, little maggot over there in North Korea on his way out the door. There is two things that Donald Trump uh, needs to accomplish before we get rid of that motherfucker. And I'm just gonna let my buddy Chris Hedges uh, wrap up this week's Dump the Trump D Hive Roundup. This was Chris Hedges closing out his hour long uh, rant titled, Chris Hedges Delivers the Ultimate Trump Takedown. And then wrap it up for us, Chris. Now is the time not to cooperate. Now is the time to shut down the systems of power. Now is the time to resist. It is our last chance fanatics are moving with lightning speed. So should we. There you go. Thank you, Chris Hedges. The fanatics 
are moving with lightning speed and so should we. Anyway, this is my tiny little part that I can do screaming into the universe. It is time to dump the Trump. Get that motherfucker out of here. As soon as he gets us out of the Paris Climate Agreement and squashes that fucking little maggot over in North Korea. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this sordid wallow through the pig shit and the mud and the muck and the mire and get out and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous day here in the end times while I still can. Bye, guys.